Today we're getting into the tokenization of financial products and what that's specifically going to look like for the stock market and what problems it's going to solve. What problems would tokenizing stocks solve? And what does that even mean to tokenize uh, equities or stocks? Well, let's get down to the basics. So blockchain is just an immutable ledger that, that multiple people are able to see and transact on um, that's verified by all the parties involved and it allows for interoperability between all the parties that might be transacting with whatever the tokenized item is and allows for settlement uh, and ease and liquidity in those markets. And then you could develop smart contract protocols that were specific to financial you know, investments and how they should be transacted and build governance around that so that they can be within compliance. But that's complicated, right? So let's just stick to the basics. You're, you're able to transact easier, more efficient, and all the players involved have full visibility and can trust the other parties. So what problems would this solve for us? Well, in, in 2020 and even previous to that, you had Robin, Robinhood and Webull and eToro and, and a lot of these applications on your phone that look as though you're trading stocks real time. And effectively you are. However, the backend systems that are between the clearinghouse and the brokers are still not real time. They're, they're T plus one or T plus two. Um, sometimes they're same day, but not very often. And there's no accounting mechanism that's across all of the clearing houses and the brokers to identify if, if a stock has been oversold or problems that we've seen occur. So I'm sure you remember GameStop and AMC and Wall Street bets and the craziness that happened in 2021 with both of those two stocks. We still got some crazy stuff going on with both those two stocks. <clears throat> but there was a specific trading day where um, shorts on those stocks got liquidated, the price shot up, and tons of people were piling in through their applications on their phones. And all the ones that I mentioned, you know, Robinhood, Webull, eToro, Fidelity, it, all of these brokers were able to sell that stock. And they actually sold like 139% of AMC's stock. Well, that's a problem because then the clearinghouses are actually the ones who, who froze trading on these stocks. Uh, people thought that it was the brokers. They got mad at Robinhood. They got mad at Webull. They got mad at whoever they, they, whatever platform they were using. But realistically, these clearinghouses were having to front all of this money because of the volume on those two stocks in particular. And because the brokers oversold them, they had to freeze trading and then pull those stocks back from people and figure out who they were going to take them from. It was a big problem, right? Because the trading isn't really real time. It looks as though it's real time on your phone, but it's it's not on the back end systems. So the integration of blockchain and smart contracts and the tokenization of equities would actually allow for volumes to run up like that. And you would have the ability to trade real time without having to freeze stocks and figure out what went wrong. So that's, that is the problem that this solves. It allows for instant settlement and, and exchange of the funds from the broker to the clearing houses for the equity to hold in, in whatever the individual's name is that's traded for that stock. And <clears throat> there's an accounting mechanism that only allows you to sell as many stocks as exists. You can't oversell the stocks because now there's, you know, uh, a digital identifier that's specific to that stock that's that's being traded with a certificate, right? Uh, and then you can get into stock splits, why those would no longer be relevant. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen significant run up in, in Google and Facebook and Tesla, and and a lot of these companies have done stock splits, and so they'll run up to like two, three, four thousand dollar valuation on a stock, and because the valuation so high, now the average retail investor can't make meaningful allocations. Like some people want to throw 50, 100, 200, maybe $300 at a stock. And if it's above that, they'll just find something else to put their money into. So when, when stocks reach those types of valuations, you often see them do a stock split, whether they do like a 10 to one or 20 to one, where everybody that has stock, you'll now get 20 or whatever the ratio was that I just mentioned in your account for each one stock you had. Now you have 10 or 20 and that, that brings the price per share back down to a reasonable area where the average retail investor can make a meaningful allocation. In the future, if you have tokenized 
equities or tokenized stocks, you can, you would also have fractionalized shares. So then just like Bitcoin, you could buy one Satoshi, right? Let's say you wanted to buy a thousandth of a share that was worth $4,000. Well, now you can make a four, you can take a $4 position on that stock. Um, and I think that we will see stocks no longer do stock splits because they won't have to. They'll just have, have a, how they will have, they will just have however many shares they've issued into the market. They'll be fractionalized. They might add a decimal place. You know, if they run up to 10,000, they might be to the fifth decimal place. You can allocate up, you know, $1. Um, if it's, if they're like Berkshire Hathaway and they're a hundred thousand dollars plus, uh, you could then buy, you know, a uh, hundred thousand of a share and make a $1 allocation to their stock. So it kind of thwarts their deal of, you know, you have to own a stock to come to their investor conference once a year. But aside from that caveat, it, it really opens these markets up in a meaningful way to the average retail investor that really doesn't have that much capital to allocate to these markets. Um, you know, maybe you only have an extra 10, 50, hundred dollars a week or a month that you can put into the market after all your bills are paid. Well, and, but you want to buy Apple and Apple, so you got to save for three, four months before you can make the investment with the, the fractionalized shares. You could, you could go ahead and make that investment and buy a quarter of a stock or <clears throat> however much you wanted and, and, and the ratio that would exist. But these are some of the ways that it would improve the market if stocks became tokenized. And I'm sure that there's likely other things that I haven't even mentioned here that would be efficiencies that would be created by the tokenization of stocks. My anticipation is that that will happen over the next three years. I'm excited, you know, for the innovations that are going to occur with cross-border payments and real-time transactions over the next 12 months uh, that'll likely then, you know, proliferate into these other financial products and other financial aspects of the economy. <clears throat> but hopefully this has provided some insight for you and, and why tokenization of the stock market would matter and improve the way things are transacted. If you like topics like this, we discuss them all the time in the mastermind. We'd love to see you there. Just connect with me on LinkedIn and we'll get you in. With that, we'll see you guys on the next one.